Okay, we're going to go through the uh, process of doing takeoff within Timberline estimating. Um, so here what you do first off, once you open up the program, you just create an estimate, um, go through, give it a name, we'll call this estimate, and start uh, uh, setting that up. The idea of Timberline estimating is it's very database driven, so what, we'll do, what you do is you spend a bit of time to start with sort of working out how you're going to do takeoff, what the formulas are, how, the, how that's all going to go together. Um, we'll have a, a good bit of a look at that during the process here. So here when you come up, you've got the investment information page, so you start to fill out the details of the address and the size of the job and who the client is and all these sorts of things. This is just sort of information. There's a product called uh, Estimating Explorer, which allows you to look across projects and see what are all the projects I've done for this architect or um, this client or what are all the hospitals we've done lately, and so you can compare projects and look at rates per square meter, that sort of thing. So as you close that down, it'll just open up into a blank spreadsheet um, that you might look at. So this is my, my blank spreadsheet as I look at down the page. The most simple way of doing takeoff in Timberline is to use the, the database to do so. So we'll do this quick takeoff. So you click on that and um, it brings up a list here of all the different, in this case, their trades. So this is a, a very commercial construction sort of orientated database. Um, and it's, it's so the trades that you see there are very similar to the standard method of measurement. Um, that's the idea of this particular database is to be very familiar with the way you do takeoff. So you say I want a bit of masonry, I want block work, I want to put um, block work supply quote in. I'll have one of those, and that's all I want. Or, or if you want, um, you know, a bit of concrete, you go into concrete. So I want uh, 25 MPA concrete to strip footing. In this case here, I've got some formulas in here. And again, these are stuff that we customise to suit you guys. So it's uh, you put in you know, the length, the width, and the depth of the footing, and it'll do the maths for you. So as you close down this, it started to do the maths in the spreadsheet there, and I've started to build up my estimate in some way. That's the most simple way of doing takeoff. Probably not the way you'd use it the most. What we tend to try and do is to set up what are called assemblies. So assemblies are where you can start to do takeoff of things and, and join all the stuff together. So if I do a concrete slab, we go into substructure there, um, I'll do a, uh, a warehouse slab, and I'll go through and answer the questions about the slab. So I'm going to put in, I can leave that blank and put in the total area. This is where we link into things like the CAD takeoff system. So as here you just right click and go to uh, the digitizer or the CAD takeoff and just go and grab the dimension from there. Um, and so we can put that in. So let's just put in um, 270 meters squared. Um, how thick the set? So these questions are coming up because of the items down underneath here and what needs to be measured. So this is asking questions about the sand bed because that's what it needs to know the depth of the sand bed, or maybe it's um, the crushed rock or, or dust you're using. Um, I've got a, in this case here we've got a different labour rate for different thicknesses of slab. Um, I want to put one layer of mesh in my slab. It's S92, SL92. I want to make it. Uh, it's in metres, so I want it to be 150 mil thick. I want to use 25 MPA concrete. Um, no, I don't want to put your sealer over it, so I press enter. And you'll notice here that all these, this stuff has got mass behind it. So what we've done is worked out, okay, how do we, how am I going to measure that roll or, or those, that there's a tape or sand bed? And how, what's the maths involved in doing all these things? Um, and we'll go through and have a quick look at how that calculations are done in a minute. Um, you click OK, and that drops all the items that you need into a spreadsheet. It drops, it drops them all into their correct trade. So in this case here, they're all, or the some of that was in groundworks, the rest of it's in concrete. Um, you also have things that can go across trades. So say for example a door. If I grab this ex this exit door here, and just say I want one of these, um, then you'll notice that um, as I measure that and hit OK and close, the items that it's measured are things so it's put stuff into carpentry, it's put stuff into doors, it's put stuff into painting because that was an exit door, it's put in exit lights and vandal lights and all sorts of things. So it's, a, it's taken off multiple trades at once. And that's the idea is again speed up that process of takeoff for all the usual stuff you measure. When you come across the stuff that you don't measure very often, you've got a one time item button there. Well, the other thing they've added is uh, being able to do it even from this quick takeoff screen. And say I want to do uh, hydraulic services, I want to chuck in that item there because I want to put a fountain out the front of this thing. And so all it does is drops the item into the spreadsheet here, and you can just say fountain, I want one of those, it's an each, and it's um, 
you know, you can either look at it based on a labour and material rate, or you can you can again decide how you want to build up that that rate for that item. So maybe it's just a material price of $45. Maybe it's I'm going to do labour, and I'm going to say that they can the labourer can do um, I don't know two of these per hour. And so, the, and at $45 an hour, that means that you can do that. So, you can build up the labour rate um, associated with it, and then uh, measure that as well. So, there's some of the ways you can use timberline estimating. This uh, item here is light blue. It's telling me, hey, look, there's some item here. There's something wrong with this at the moment, and the thing that's wrong with it is it hasn't got a price yet. So, again, we can go through, put in the quote for uh, for the um, the block work. You'll notice that because I put that in the amount column, that thinks it's a lump sum amount, so that's why it's come up bold and highlighted like that. As you hit OK and close, that information stays on the, um, there, so it's now uh, a, a lump sum item. So you can continue to go and do takeoff like that. If you're the sort of builder who's measuring stuff that's uh, fairly consistent all the time, then there's an add-on module to the estimating system called Model Takeoff. And what this allows you to do is to go through and do almost an interview process where you can say, I'm going to measure a warehouse, and I'm going to go through and have a look at this and see how the, um, the process of measuring my warehouse is, and just go through and answer the questions. So in this instance here, we'll say the approximate size of our warehouse is, I don't know, 5,000 square metres. Um, it's going to have... And then we're going through, again, we're looking at, so we're looking at employee numbers here to calculate the number of, um, or the size of the amenity areas and things like that, toilets and things. So maybe I've got uh, 20 males and you know, 20 females. Um, I've got uh, a lunchroom I need. I need a uh, separate tea house. Uh, oops, that didn't tick. Um, how many people do I need in the lunchroom? Oh, let's say 15 at a time. Um, you know, and you go through and answer all these questions. And as you go down, it's starting to put things out so we've got a um, preferred width of the dimension being uh, of our factory being 40 meters across so we've got a portal obviously um, of that size so now we're going to have to be 125 meters long to be able to come up with our 5,000 square meters um, you know what do we want the height of this um, warehouse to be I'll make it 15 meters um, if I'm going to put racking in this warehouse you know what, what the racking levels are um, if I make that five um, it's telling me that actually I only really need the height of the wall to be 9, so maybe I should do that. That's why that red writing was there. It was telling me that you know, I can probably get away with less. Um, so there's all sorts of ways that we can calculate uh, um, the uh, yeah, this is pallet loads and all sorts of things, the calculations that have gone into this process. Um, as you click OK and you go through, you can actually tell it, no, let's just measure this whole thing. So. Um, and what it will now do is go through and, and do takeoff based on those uh, questions that we've just answered um, and for everything that you might need for a warehouse. So it's going through measuring slabs and tie beams and toilets and lunch rooms and tea rooms and painting and air conditioning and whatever else we, we specified in our interview process. And so that's gone through and measured all that stuff. So that's the idea of model takeoff is to be able to do all that repetitive stuff that you do very often. We can remove all that sort of mundane work for you and make that uh, something that's consistent. At this point in time, my estimate is all just what it's going to cost me. If I go to the totals page here and uh, bring that up, it's got uh, here just a, a breakdown of labour material subcontract at this point in time. I can click on this and say, look, actually what I'd like to do is add profit and overheads and GST allowances or whatever else I've got. Um, you can go through and change that very quickly and say, look, I'd like to make 15% on this job, or um, just make that so you can see it. So you can go through and, and, and allocate that. So now that's um, come up with a, a total of you know, nearly $1.5 million, whatever. So you can start to see this process is how it's going to do it. As you hit OK, it's uh, doing all that takeoff. So that, that down the bottom of the page here, I can still see the grand total. Um, if you're the sort of person who likes looking at rates and things, you can um, put in the, uh, the size of the job and say this is a, what did we say it was? I think it was a 5,000 square metre warehouse off the top of my head. Um, and so, oops, where did it go? 5,000 metre squared, yep, good. So if I close it down now, see down the bottom here I can see rates per square metre. So you're starting to get a look at that sort of information. You can easily look at this information in the spreadsheet and collapse and, and expand it. So if you click on the collapse button here, it squashes it down so we can see rates 
uh, the totals for each um, section, squash it down again, you can see the totals for each trade, um, open it back up again, hit the plus button, so there's lots of ways that you can sort and summarise this estimate. There are literally dozens of columns here that I don't have open that I can look at on each item and decide the sort of detail that I'd like to see. I might like to see the percentage of the total or I might like to see the late last date and time that it was entered. Um, all sorts of different ways that you can do it. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much the process of doing takeoff in the standard edition Timberline. Thank you. Bye.